Hey guys, how's it going? It's Jay here and welcome back to the channel. Today we're taking a look at the Burson Audio Soloist 3X headphone amplifier and a preamplifier. Now this is a very good headphone amplifier, but also a very good preamplifier. It's going to be a brand new design from them and it's going to retail at 1,144 US dollars. Now they sent me this unit a while back and I've been using it in my stereo system as well as on my desktop system. So we'll talk about both type of scenarios. But just very quickly in terms of headphone amplification, it outputs four watts in single ended and eight watts in XLR balance mode, which is all in class A. And I do have to say that is probably powerful enough to drive most headphones out there and I think it's safe to say that at this point. Perhaps it is the most powerful headphone amplifier at this size. And in terms of the sound characteristic with the headphone section, I used my Sennheiser HD 600, which is a headphone I know very well. I also tried it with many different Odyssey and Hyphen and AKG headphones that I have in my collection. And as you guys probably know, I'm a huge headphone collector, and also I've heard many different headphone amplifiers in my time. Uh, in the hobby, and I will go on record for saying this, but this Burson headphone amplifier is perhaps the best headphone amplifier I've heard to date in this price category. And in comparison to something like a ModRite LS100, which is my pre-amplifier, but also a very good headphone amplifier, does not stand a chance. The Burson is just more dynamic while being cleaner, and it's still smooth like my ModRite LS100. It throws a larger soundstage, uh, even though it's headphones, and it's just more spacious, more cleaner sound, and it just seems to be a more high resolution type of sound. Now, I did try the Burson with in-ear monitors because they claim that the noise floor is low enough for a in-ear monitor that is really sensitive, and I found that that was the case. It had no problem whatsoever, and I found that really interesting because usually the high-powered headphone amplifiers tend to have a problem when you plug in a sensitive in your monitor in terms of the noise floor being high. But in this case, it was dead quiet and it was perfectly enjoyable within your monitors as well. Now, switching over to the preamp section, the Soloist uses the legendary Muses 72320 volume controller, which is a volume controller that can be found in higher end components like pass labs, or many of the higher end preamplifiers in the market. And being a resistor ladder circuit, it has very good channel separation. So in terms of its inputs, it has both balanced and RCA single ended, but for its outputs, it only has balanced outputs. So you can use an adapter to go from XLR to RCA if you need single ended outputs, but be very careful, this output doesn't have coupling capacitors, which means that it is more ideal for balanced outputs so it'll sound better in balanced, but at the same time, you can't use any XLR to RCA adapter. You have to use specific ones, and this is listed on the Burson Soloist 3X manual. And also you can find it online as well. And to switch back and forth for different inputs, muting and turning off and on the unit, you get a remote that's very small and slim. And to access other options that I won't go in any detail here, you just press this button and it will show you the menus and you select it from there. So that kind of covers the overall functionality of it, except one last thing that's vital is that this is an op-amp rolling preamplifier and headphone amplifier, which means that you can change the op-amp inside the Burson Audio. So if you open up the unit, you get these op-amps that you can switch out to. So these are the ones that you would get normally that you see here, and then you can switch to these ones. So another good thing about the Soloist 3X is that it comes with their top of the line op amp installed, which is the V6 Vivid and the one that you see here in red. And quickly, the advantages of these upgraded op amp is that it has new enclosures that improves temperature tolerance, reverse power protection circuit for double free installation, 0.5% tolerance KDA Japanese metal film resistors, and two stages hand matched FET input and output transistors. And I also got the classic in to test out the sound of this op amp, which is the orange or yellowish one. I definitely prefer the Vivid, which one, which is the red one, and that is the one that is installed in your unit when it arrives to you. And this one sounds to me a little bit more smoother than the classic, and I found the classic to be a little bit more detailed. 
But the Vivid, hands down, wins my heart in terms of its musicality and being a little bit more smoother and throwing a larger kind of smooth 3D holographic soundstage. Um, the differences are subtle between the two op amps, but I think the biggest improvement that you see here is going from the non-upgraded op amps to the upgraded op amps. And there you definitely see a change in the sound. And not only do these uh, preamplifiers and components from Burson benefit from these op amps, Burson is known for creating their op amps and many other people buy their op amps to switch it up with their other high-end audio components. So it is very good that they include the V6 Vivid here on the Soloist 3X. So I was using the Burson as a preamplifier in my desktop setup, which I was using the ModRite LS100 as my preamplifier before in this setup. And the amplifiers are Kenwood uh, mono blocks. They're vintage, but I love them. Um, L07M, I believe. And the speakers I'm testing right now is the LS35A from Sound Artist. So this setup I know pretty well. It's been about a few months since I had the setup going and I've been playing them nonstop. And the only thing that was switched out was the preamplifier from the ModRite to the Burson. And first thing I noticed was that it actually sounded better than my ModRite LS100 in this setup. In fact, I found the bass to be more punchy and dynamic. That was the first thing. And the second thing was that it was smoother um, then my, my ModRite LS100, which I found to be odd because the ModRite LS100 is a pretty smooth sounding preamplifier and is tube based. And in fact, if anything, I found the Burson Audio more holographic, even though it's a solid state device. So I was very impressed with the Burson Audio in my desktop setup in the very beginning. So I kept it there for a while and I enjoyed it very much. Now I brought it downstairs for my stereo system setup and tried to test it out there for my review purposes. And when I switched it back to my ModRite in my desktop setup, I found myself missing the Burson audio preamplifier in my desktop space. I actually wanted to go back to the Burson in my desktop because it just sounded better overall with that setup going. Now when I had them hooked up to my main system, and you have to understand when I was testing the Burson audio in my main system, I was using pretty high-end components and pretty revealing components, including the speakers being Focal, uh, which retails for $17,000 US and the Magical Speakers re which retails for $7,400 US and also I had Tecton lower speakers which I enjoy very much. I had my trusty JBL 4311s which are my main speakers that I know very well. Not that they're the most revealing but I know them just very well from working in my studio spaces with them before. And I also had other speakers that I tested in this space including some of the active speakers like the Elect Navis and the new Bocard Audio A500s and so on. And one thing that I did find very, very impressive with the Burson is that if you have an active speaker and you're looking for a preamplifier that has balanced output and balanced in to your active monitors, this is the preamplifier. This amplifier just makes your active speakers sound more dynamic and more soundstage, more everything and just more resolution in general, I found that it just sounds better when you have the person in the chain rather than just going from a, directly from a DAC or using other preamplifiers. Um, I also use very high-end preamplifiers in the past with active speakers and they weren't all that impressive. The Burson hits the very sweet spot with active speakers in my opinion. And it kind of makes sense because the Burson Audio really emphasizes the balanced output on this device and they took careful attention to uh, making that output very, very good. But not only that, when I had my Burson Audio pre-out to my Kinky Studio monoblocks using XLR connection and also the new Purify Agintact that I'm reviewing for a soundstage, which I'll link in the description below for you to check out, I found that the sound was just incredibly more dynamic. And I think that's the main thing here is that the Burson Audio makes your system sound more dynamic while being clean without any kind of edginess to the sound. It makes your system sound more analog, which is exactly the type of sound I like. And that's exactly why I'm so excited about this unit. And being a small device, I expected much less from the Burson Solus 3X in terms of its preamp capability. And I thought the attention to detail was more on the headphone amplifier section, but I definitely can vouch for the preamp section on this device. It just sounds incredibly good. Now, is this a giant killer? Does it beat Macintosh 
preamplifiers or audio research preamplifiers and so on in the high end audio? No, I don't think so. But at the same time, it performs almost as good as my ModRite LS100. In some cases, in terms of synergy, in my near field, I find the version audio to be outperforming my ModRite LS100. So if you get the pairing right, and also at the given price point of around, I think 3,000 or 4,000 US and under, I think it's safe to say that you can compare the version audio directly in that kind of price range. So I definitely think that this is a very promising and very good sounding preamplifier, but also a very good headphone amplifier, like I mentioned. And that's pretty much it for this review. So thank you for watching. Make sure to subscribe if you're not already subscribed and make sure to click that like button if you liked the video and was helpful to you. And I'll see you guys on the next one.